All right. Hi, everyone. Um, today I'm going to be sharing something called the nourish the nourishing madot of Saban. Um, and uh, madot is something that uh, that I've you know been learning through Musar and um, you know of course Keisha now has her her class that's wonderful going on, um, but every month I look at the madot. And for this time, they seem to just jump out a little bit as I was going through our handouts and just, you know, renewing the information for this month, the Madot stood out. So Savan, meaning radiance, um, and their covering is known as the month of extravagant provision, um, as mentioned already. And it's about giving and uh, alignment and mercy. And so um, the third month, the, because it's the third month, the third letter is uh, Gimel. And the symbol for Gimel is camel, right? So as we begin our walk this month, let's keep in mind that we should be resting in Yahweh's lavish provision and love, knowing that all that he provided in the wilderness for the Israelites, he provides for us in our place of newness, um, wherever that is. It doesn't always feel new, but it is. Um, Yahweh's provision for us was prepared, prepared before we needed it. Um, as Christine Bell says, it's a supply in advance. And I love, I love that I, idea, um, you know, as moms and, you know, we can, plan for trips, right? And a lot of thought goes in it um, because we're looking ahead. Uh, we, we, haven't, we haven't got to the trip yet, gone on the trip, yet we're going to plan for all those maybes, the what ifs, and the father does that as well. We don't see what's ahead on our journey and our travels, but he does. And he's got it ready so that he's not, you know, sometimes if we're not prepared, we're floundering looking for the provisions that we need or the things that we need in that moment. But the Father always has us covered. Uh, so during this time, um, we meet with the Father for further instruction on the mountain as we survey the situations of our life. This month, we are completing some things and walking out what we declared during Nisan, uh, free from slavery or bondage or whatever that looks like um, in our circumstances. The Mado for this month is trustworthy, responsibility, and awareness. Each character trait nourishes the soul for our life journey. And um, as Erica was talking earlier about uh, when she mentioned the Mado, I was thinking that a, a Mado is a measure. And because just as Yahweh gives us the provision we need, he gives us the portion that we need and the measure that we need when we need it. Um, Let's see. So practicing a measure of the month's medotes provides nourishment to our souls as we journey each month. We, like the Israelites, are walking forth or into new territory. Although last month also started with walking, as in walking out of a place of confinement and bondage, this month's perspective is different. Walking forth or into can feel daunting or be seen as a positive. An action not necessarily done in full clarity, but done in hope and expectation. And walking out and leaving the past, our place of walking forth or into may seem like walking in a desert. At first glance, the place may seem dry, with no obvious path or direction, leaving our spirits feeling parched and desolate in the unknown of the future. But this is where the first medot is used, trustworthiness which is the ability to be relied on, being honest or faithful, the quality of being deserving of trust, confidence, and one who exhibits the highest quality of ethical standards. Question, can or will the Father be able to trust in our faith in him in showing the way to walk forth? Can we be relied on, because we know we can rely on him, but can we be relied on? Um, to keep our eyes on the daily direction that he provides. His promise of extravagant provision means receiving everything that we need in any given situation that arises on our journey forth. 
but too often we stick to old familiar roads of thought and consequently we don't get far in setting new goals or achieving success and recommitting to old ones. We have to stretch and exercise our muscles when it comes to trusting the Father. Uh, the diversity of the meaning of this month's letter, um, Zane, encompasses a rich pictograph of wholeness. A few are abundance, nourishment, full light, a sword, weapon, completion, and rest. The next medot responsibility, responsibility speaks to all the, the, the nouns that we just spoke of. Responsibility means the state of or fact of having a duty to deal with something. It's a moral obligation to behave correctly or in respect of. The Jewish meaning, al kriot has a deeper meaning. It's about respond or answering for your decisions and actions. The root is akher, meaning other. It's about our moral commitment to the other person, not just to answer for our actions, but to answer and make the other person's needs our own. Opportunities to practice responsibility this month. Uh, and the themes of this month are pivotal. So an opportunity for responsibility is in the letter of Zayn. A crown or weapon, it's using the spiritual weapons that Yahweh gives us. We have the responsibility of learning how to wield the weapon that he has given us um, and how to wield the weapon of his word in spiritual warfare, starting with our thoughts, which was last month's sense, using the word to combat all negativity and pushing forth as we walk. Another opportunity for responsibility is in rest, the responsibility of Zakar, remembering and keeping and guarding Yahweh's modim, the rest and renewal of Shabbat, new moon, and his festivals. As Keisha notes in her 2019 video, Issachar knew that rest was good. He knew that the weekly and yearly Shabbat or rest days were given on day four of creation, and he knew where Adonai had placed his name, the pleasant land, Jerusalem, and Israel. And I love the thought that he has placed his name on us, that we have it now. Um, and so it's our responsibility um, that doesn't have to be a burden like other responsibilities, right, that we may have in our lives, but the responsibility of remembering his, his set apart times are joyous. It's a joyous task. And um, counting, counting's another responsibility we have for this month. Um, Sapar, if I'm correct, pronouncing that, counting the men in the census, the counting of the stars as Abraham's descendants, and the counting of the Omar, a countdown for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And the last medot is awareness, the knowledge or perception of a situation or fact. It connects trustworthy and responsibility in the battle of spiritual warfare. Being trustworthy and responsible in our spiritual walk will heighten our awareness of mental division, double-mindedness, and internal conflict. Unchecked thoughts connecting to emotions results in self-destruction of the love, our heart, and mind. We see an example of this displayed in the people while Moses was on Mount Sinai receiving the law, and they were at the base creating the calf. Be on guard for these areas of healing as well as mood swings or conflicting thoughts. Seek guidance and staying grounded on a path of clear instructions from the Father. Pray for emotional balance and a peacemaking spirit. The emotional focus this month is generosity. So not just the act of giving, but cultivating a generous spirit. Generosity is about the alignment with the heart of Yahweh. When we're aligned with his heart, we're able to give from a place of abundance trust in his justice and extend mercy and forgiveness freely. When we align ourselves with his heart and let generosity flow, we find that there's more than enough for our needs as well. So as you walk out what you've declared this month, know that a generous heart is a key to seeing the breakthroughs that you've been seeking. Um, for me, um, I remember as we were coming out of the winter months, in Adar, I was thinking, 
okay, next month is Nissan. It's, a, it's the spring, um, new things coming. I was very excited. I didn't know that I was gonna enter into a season of transition, but that's what the themes are, right? We, if we, hit, we have the responsibility of keeping in mind what the themes are. And if we look for our situations in the month's themes, then it will help us. The, that awareness will help us as we um, continue um, in, our, in our spiritual walk. So um, this month, I, I really have appreciated the, the Medotes more than, more than usual, just because um, I'm seeing how they can fit into everyday situations in our personal lives and in our walk with the Father. So I just um, have a little prayer that I had penned last year. And what I wrote was, Abba, as we walk forward in this month, may we keep our eyes on you and exit the wilderness empowered by the rock so that we will not go any further in our own strength because our covenant is in you. We are blessed to be a blessing. Help us to remember the extravagant provision you blessed your people in the wilderness with is the same that you desire to lavish upon us today. So um, as Christine Bell says, may joy be the barometer in our giving of this month. I think that if we can um, remember that this is a season of deliverance, um, it, that's an encouraging thought for strength as we push on, because we're all, like Erica says, we're all going through something. And um, sometimes it's uh, a little, our load is a little heavier or our walk is a little slower than others because of the burdens um, that we carry. But if we keep our sights on um, praising the Father, then that praise gives us a little pep in our step. And I know that every Shabbat, that's what I experience, a pep in my step. And um, now that I have this beautiful visual of a new garment for the month, whew, I'm just going to, I'm going to make sure I'm wearing it. I'm going to make sure that, you know, I'm not letting it drag in the muck of life. So that's all I have for you this month. Is, ladies, may you be blessed. Beautiful. Thank you. So good. Yeah. I love that you uh, like focused on the medotes. I think sometimes we bring them out. It's always something. It's like whatever is resonating with us, you know, but I just, I love that. And I love how much activity you put in there because I think that is a lot um, as we're walking out. It's we're, we have to actively create that place and we want it to happen automatically because, you know, sometimes it's easier. I'd love to take a pill and lose 30 pounds, but it's going to take activity to, to have, see real gains and feel better for it. Right. I mean, because it's a discipline, right? I'm sorry, it's a discipline. So it's like actively putting that, that, um, the effort in it's that yeah. action of walking out what we're reading, what we're hearing, what we're, we can think about it and it sounds great until, but we still have to, I don't want to say until, because it's a good thing, right? Pushing yeah. forward that effort. Um, what is that? No pain, no gain. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> well, and it's a season as we, as the weather warms up and at least where I'm at and here in our nation, it's time to get up and walk and move and be more active. And it's just absolutely a, a great thing compared to being stuck in the house for the winter months. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So such good stuff. I, I just want to recap a few things and add in a couple things, but as the ladies mentioned, Savan's body part uh, for the month is the foot, spleen, and stomach. And those points, um, the left foot particularly, is connected to the emotions that were mentioned earlier and on the slide. But those are worry and despair, apathy, and selfishness. So the spleen meridian is active, and I thought this was really interesting, between 9 and 11 a.m., and those are their, our energetic points in our body. You know, as, as human beings, we are energetic and, and living. And um, you may see that those emotions kick in during that time between 9 and 11 o'clock in the morning. And some other things that could show up 
would be low self-esteem, self-blame, disgust, obsessive, or compulsive. The left side of the body is also, also associated with feminism and the feet with feeling supported. And as ladies, we like to feel supported, right? And that it, it kind of gives us a little bit more strength to keep going and walk through all of the stuff that we walk through each and every day. Um, Rhonda mentioned that this is the month of generosity and um, I have, I have a few verses on that I'll share at the end, but definitely, you know, it's, and I don't know if any of you have felt this so far, I know it's early in the month, but just, just wanting to give and, and that could be your time. That could be a meal that could be whatever, um, or just a listening ear or, um, you know, spending time with people and, and just enjoying this time outside or, you know, even during um, Shabbat, just spending that little extra time. We, you know, um, sometimes I think when it's cold outside, we just want to get home and be by the fireplace. But as the, the temperatures are in the uh, 70s or low 80s, or um, it just kind of puts that little bit of, I want to socialize and I want to be generous with my time or my offerings or my gifts. So between nine and 11 o'clock in the morning and you start feeling something that's that emotional thing that you just don't wanna go through, uh, I found, and I'll share this, I put it up on the beginning of the chat. So there is a reflexology points here and I have this one here and I can put it again in the chat. But if we're looking at the temples to be here, the next two, those yellow, those yellow colored areas, those are actually connected to your spleen. So, uh, which I found just amazing, you know, how everything's connected, our hands, our feet, our face, they all have uh, points, meridian points. Um, we know this from uh, Chinese medicine for acupuncture points or acupressure points, but the same thing is with reflexology. And so if you're hitting that moment, you know, between nine and 11, and you're coming into one of those emotions, the uh, using a carrier oil and some essential oil. So placing three droppers in a bottle of your carrier oil, fractionated coconut oil is my preference. Um, placing, you can do a blend of essential oils. Some of those would be orange, ginger, vetiver, cardamom, patchouli, fennel. So those all help support the, uh, the spleen. So take your bottle, if you make, you know, make a mixture and pray over it first and foremost, and then tap the oil to activate that and then use it. And you can massage in a circular motion just here on your temples. And that helps with your spleen and activating those points. Um, also, I, I want to throw out some herbs to you for your spleen health, ginseng, Chinese yam, and licorice. So those can come in capsules. They can come in teas. They can come in tinctures. Um, those aren't something right there that I would cook with. Um, but they, you know, and of course, being a natural medicine, it's going to take a little bit longer for those to kick in. So it's something you might want to use for this month just for those, you know, that particular organ and, and helping the spleen and helping the stomach. And I heard a study yesterday that one of the um, main problems is chronic gastritis here in the United States and Canada, um, maybe even worldwide, a couple of the naturopaths were talking about, which really doesn't surprise me. Because as I move into the next thing here, it's foods, foods to avoid that really can ex, um, affect your spleen. And if we stop and think about this, they're just so uh, common in today's to, uh, society with what we eat. But they're damp foods. So alcohol, fat, um, fast sugars, so like your table sugars energy drinks. Think about how many times we see someone that has an energy drink in their hand. And even though Shavuot's coming, milkshakes 
uh, milkshakes are on that list. Um, that's kind of sad to me. I love my ice cream and milkshakes. This is another reference I wanted to share with you tonight. It's a really big book, but it covers herbs, nutrition, a whole variety of different things, and not just nutritional health. So, you know, um, I wanted to share. I like sharing my resources, and I can put this up in the chat too. But it's Prescription for Nutritional Healing. And that is just a great resource. Yeah, I, I'm all about building a library that I can grab and go take it with me. And um, this has a lot of information in it, yeah, all in one place. That seems to be the thing is you can have 50 books and they all have great information, but it's still 50 books. <clears throat> Some of the foods to add would be your berries. As we're moving into spring, right? Our strawberries are out back and they're getting ready to ripen and it's so exciting. Uh, citrus, cherries, bananas and apples, broccoli and asparagus, peppers, sweet potatoes, quinoa, and barley, and also checking into the Mediterranean diet. That, that may be one that has all of those items in there that are healthy choices. Um, black pepper, ginger, and cinnamon could be something you could add to your, your cinnamon, you could add that to your water. Your cooking, you could add in some black pepper and ginger. And the last thing I wanted to add, um, and here's my other resource, Healing in the Hebrew Months. But there is a tapping exercise for generosity. And if anyone has this book, it's actually on page 113. And I want to mention, too, is Dina Smiley. She's here on the Ruta Cafe, and she is a certified tapping practitioner. And she adds in scripture and just... Um, just as a beautiful, just as a beautiful sister and uh, reach out to her if you have any questions. What I'm gonna just discuss really quick and very briefly are the different points where you could use for tapping to help with generosity. So under your eyes, under your arms, your collarbones, the back of your hand, should be, it's the ring side, so here, and then on the side of your hand, so down here. And some of the scripture, if you want to jot these down or listen later, and I can, uh, anybody want to send me a message, I can send them to you as well. Ruth 2, 1 Samuel 6, 13, and chapter 12, verse 17. Esther, chapter 8, verse 9. Ezekiel, 31.1, .1, or 31, verse 1. And Acts 2, 1 through 38. For the tapping, as you go through and tap first time through, second time through, third time through, as described in the book, I always look and see what the verse is for that, for that session as you're, as you're going through it. And it's Proverbs 1125. So if you're going through that tapping series, then you would repeat this verse. The generous person will be prosperous and he who waters will himself be watered. And I just found that it's an exciting time. It's exciting month. There's so much life. And just as Jen had put in there, we have to make that decision. And what are we going to do with the provision that Father gives us? Are we going to use it for ourselves and be selfish, which is one of the um, characteristics for this month, or are we going to be generous? So I, uh, it's exciting to me. And I, I just pray that all of you ladies that joined us or are listening later on are blessed and find that generosity that can come in this very beautiful month as all the months are beautiful. But I just wanted to share some of those things. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to me, any of the resources that I showed. And I just thank you. Hallelujah. Great job. Hallelujah. What was the uh, first Samuel verses that you had listed in the last one? Um, 
first Samuel six, verse 13 okay. and 12, verse 17. Thank you. 